directions. Hush, mother. He's here. A reverend vicar? Oh, pity me. My heart is almost broken. My child be comforted! To such a union I shall not offer any opposition. Take him! He is yours! May you and he be happy! Mother, dear, he's not yours to give. That's true indeed. <laughs> he might object. He might. But come, take heart. I'll prove him on the subject. Be comforted. Delicate? Oh no, sir, I don't! <laughs> 
don't mean that. But young girls do look to get married. Oh, <laughs> I take you, to be sure. But there's plenty of time for that, Mrs. Bartlett. Four or five years hence, up. Uh, four or five years hence. But when the time does come, I shall have much pleasure in marrying her myself. Oh, mother! To some strapping young fellow in her own rank of life. <laughs> oh, shit. Not I have often wondered, Reverend Sir, if you'll excuse the liberty, that you have never married. Be still, my <coughs> fluttering heart. A clergyman's life does so much good for a village. Besides that, you are not as young as you once were. And soon you will want somebody to nurse you and look after your little comforts. Mrs. Bartlett, there is much truth in what you say. I am indeed getting on in years. And a helpmate would cheer my declining days. Time was what it might have been, but I have left it too long. I'm an old fogey now, am I not, my dear? A very old fogey indeed. <laughs> no, Mrs. Bartlett, my mind is quite made up. I shall live and die a solitary old bachelor. Oh, mother, mother, come, oh, come, dear one, don't fret. At a more fitting time, we will try again. We will try again. Poor little girl. It seems as if she has something on her mind. <laughs> she is rather comely. <laughs> time was when this old part would have throbbed and double time at the sight of such a fairy form. But tush, I am puling. Here comes the young Alexis with his proud and happy father. Let me dry this tell-tale tear. <laughs> Sir Marmaduke, my dear young friend Alexis, on his most happy, most suspicious lighting. Permit me, as a true old friend, to tender my best, my very best, Congratulations. Sir, you are most obliging. Dr. Daly, my dear old tutor, and my valued pastor, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. <coughs> of your young life be pleasant as the foreground, the joyous foreground. And when you have reached it, may that which now is the far-off horizon, but which will then become the middle distance, in fruitful promise be exceeded only by that which will have opened in the meantime into a new and glorious horizon. <laughs> Dear sir, this is an excellent example of an old school of stately compliment to which I have, through life, been much addicted. Will you oblige me with a copy of an inkworthy manuscript that I myself may use on an appropriate occasion? Sir, you shall have a fairly written copy ere soul has sunk into his western slumbers. Come, come, my son. Your fiancé will be here in five minutes. Rouse yourself to receive her. Oh, rapture. Yes, you are a fortunate fellow, and I will not disguise from you that this union with the house of Sangazor realizes my fondest wishes. Aline is rich, and she comes of a sufficiently old family, for she sees 7,037 in direct descent from Helen of Troy. <laughs> True, there was a blob on the escutron of that lady, that affair with Paris, but where is the family, other than my own, in which there is no flaw? You are a lucky fellow, a very lucky fellow. Father, I am welling over with limpid joy. No sickling taint of sorrow overlies a lucid lake of liquid love, upon which, hand in hand, Aline and I, Aline and I are floating to eternity. 
Alexis, I desire that of your love for this young lady you do not speak so openly. You are always singing ballads in praise of her beauty, and you expect the very menials who wait behind your chair to chorus your ecstasies. It is not delicate. The father, a man who loves as I love. Who was pooh, sir? Fifty years ago, I madly loved your future mother-in-law, the lady sang you so. And I have reason to believe that she returned my love. Were we guilty of that indelicacy of publicly rushing into each other's arms, exclaiming, Oh, my adored one. Beloved boy! Ecstatic rapture! Which seems to be the modern fashion of lovemaking. No, it was. Madam, I trust you are in the enjoyment of good health. Yes, sir, you are vastly polite. I protest I am mighty well. And so forth. Much more delicate, much more respectful. But see, Aline approaches. Let us retire that she may compose herself for the interesting ceremony in which she is to play. So important part.
welcome joy, a cheer to sadness, as Aurora gilds the day. So those eyes, clouds of gladness, chase the clouds of care away.
Alas, you're alone. Darling, you are now irrevocably betrothed to me. Are you not very, very happy? Oh, Alexis, can you doubt it? Do I not love you beyond all on earth? And it might not be loved in return. It's not true love, faithfully given and faithfully received. The source of every earthly joy. That there could be no doubt. Oh, the, the world could be persuaded of the truth of that maxim. The world would break down all, all the artificial barriers of rank, wealth, education, age, beauty, habits, taste, and temper, and recognize the glorious truth that being marriage alone is become the panacea for every ill. Oh, continue to preach that sweet doctrine, and you will succeed, evangel of true happiness. I hope so. As yet, the cause progresses quite slowly. Still, I have made some converts to the principle that men and women should be coupled in matrimony without distinction of rank. Uh, I have lectured on the subject at mechanics institutes, and mechanics were unanimous in favor of my views. Uh, I have preached in workhouses, beer shops, and lunatic asylums, and I have been received with enthusiasm. Uh, I have addressed navvies on the advantages that would accrue to them if they married wealthy ladies of rank, and not a navvy dissented. Noble fellows! And yet, there are those who say that the uneducated classes are not open to argument. Oh, but what do the countesses say? Why, President, it can't be denied. The aristocracy hold aloof. Well, the working man is a true intelligence, after all. Yes, he is a noble creature, and he is quite sober. Yes, Aline. True happiness comes from true love. And, and true love should be independent of external influences. It should live upon itself and by itself. In itself, love should live from love alone. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a firm of 
J.W. Wells and Company, uh, the old established family of sorcerers and Cypriots. I have seen their advertisements. Well, they've invented a filter which, if report is to be believed, is simply infallible. Uh, I intend to distribute it through the village, and within 12 hours of my doing so, there will not be an adult in the place and will not report the secret of true and lasting happiness. Uh, what do you say to that? <laughs> well, dear, of course a filter is a very useful thing to have in a house. But still, I don't quite see how it is the sort of thing that would place its possessor on the pinnacle of every earthly joy. Oh, but Lee, you misunderstand me. I didn't say filter, I said filter. You don't mean a love potion. Oh, contrarily, I do mean a love potion. <laughs> oh, Alexis, I don't think it would be right. I don't indeed. And then, well, that would be downright wicked. Lee. Is it, is it not a laudable object to steep the whole village up to its lips in love and to couple them in matrimony without distinction of rank, wealth, or fortune? Oh, unquestionably, but I... Then, as unpleasant as it must be to have recourse to supernatural aid, I must nevertheless pocket my aversion in deference to the great and good end I have in view. Uh, Hercules? Yes, sir. Uh, is Mr. Wells there? Will you ask him to be so good as to step this way? Yes, sir. Alexis, a real sorcerer, I shall be frightened to death. I trust my lady will not yield to fear, while the strong right arm of her Alexis is there to protect her. My dear, it is nonsense for you to talk about protecting me with your strong right arm in the face of the fact that this family sorcerer could change me into a guinea pig before he could turn around. Well, he could change you into a guinea pig, but it is most unlikely he would take such a liberty. It's a most respectable firm, and I doubt they'd be guilty of so untradesmanlike an act. Good day, sir. Ah, good day. Uh, I believe you are the sorcerer. Yes, sir. We practice necromancy in all the branches. The choice is sort of wishing caps, divining rods, amulets, charms, and counter charms. We can cast an activity at a low figure, and we have horoscopes at three and six that we can guarantee. Our beauty chests, each containing a patient hag who comes out and prophesies a disaster with spring complete, are strongly recommended. <laughs> Our Aladdin lamps are very chaste, and our prophetic tablets for telling everything from a change of ministry down to a rising unified are much inquired for. Our penny purse, one of the cheapest things in the trade, is considered infallible. And we have some very superior blessings too, but they're very little asked for. In fact, we've only sold one since Christmas. A gentleman bought it to send his mother in law. But it turned out he was afflicted in the head. He returned on our hands. But our sale of penny purses, especially on Saturday night, is tremendous. We can't turn them out fast enough. <laughs> Individuality, electrobiology, mystic ontology, spirit biology, and biological astrology. 
scribbled hands and poison bags, this charred your loads and loads, spit flame and fire, unholy choir, bench foggy burning toes, ye demons fell with yelp and yell, shed curses far afield, ye feeds of my knees. Oh, no. 
one might think. And at this mystic hour, the magic drink should manifest its power.
have faith in me, for my love can never, never change. Then, then you absolutely refuse. I do. If you cannot trust me, you have no right to love me. You have no right to be loved by me. Enough. <clears throat> Aline, I shall know what to make of this refusal. <laughs>
All are engaged. <laughs> Mrs. Bartlett? <laughs> Dr. Daly, give me joy. Alexis, my dear son, you will be pleased to know I am sure that my declining days are not unlikely to be solaced by the companionship of this good, virtuous, and amiable woman. Father, this is this is not altogether what I expected. I have certainly taken somewhat by surprise. Still, it can hardly be necessary to assure you that any wife of yours is a mother of mine. It is not quite what I would have wished. Oh, sir, I entreat your forgiveness. I am aware that socially I am not everything that could be desired, nor am I blessed with an abundance of worldly goods, but I can at least confer upon your estimable father the great and priceless dowry of true, tender, and loving heart. I do not doubt it. After all, faithful love is the source, is the source of every earthly joy. Oh, I knew that my dear boy would not blame his poor father for acting on the impulse of a heart that never yet has led him astray. Sora is perhaps not what the world calls beautiful. Still, she is comely. <laughs> Sora is very good and clean. And honest, and quite, quite sober in her habits. And that is worth far more than her beauty, dear Sir Marmaduke. Yes, beauty will fade and perish, but personal cleanliness is practically undying, or can be removed whenever it discovers symptoms of decay. My dear Sir Marmaduke, I heartily congratulate you. <laughs> I rejoice that it's decided Happy now will be my life For my father is providing With a kind and tender wife She will tend him, nurse him, mend him And his men and dry his tears Lest the thoughtful face that sank him Such a wife to soothe his ears No, your pity thought makes me Full of graces and tears But so the widow read With the widow fifty No, I would exact in beauty Blazing like a jeweled sun but a wife will do her duty as that duty should be done. She will tend him, nurse him, mend him, air his bed and dry his tears. Bless the thoughtful face that sent him such a wife to soothe his ears. I'm no saucy, mix and giddy, horsey such as they're about bound, but a clean and Now I'm painted, and the happy as can be. I'm to live alone and painted, no one left to bury me. No one left to bury him. She will tend him, nurse him, mend him, air his limb and dry his tears. Bless the thoughtful face that sent him such a wife to soothe his years. Bless the sorrowful face that sent him such a wife to soothe his years.
<laughs> True. Well, I am ready. Oh, no, Alexis, no. So else, if he must die, that all may be restored to their own loves. What is to become of me? I should be left out in the cold, with no love to be restored to. True, I did not think that. My friends, I appeal to you and will leave the decision in your hands. For he, I must die, which will it be reply? Die thou, thou art the cause of all Die thou, kneel thou to this decree on earth.
Thank <laughs> you.